So I have to get this up front. Okay, my name is Clayton Reese. I'm an Army veteran of the Korean conflict. 1952, I received my greenings from Uncle Sam and reported for my basic training in Breckenridge, Kentucky with the 101st Airborne Division. Upon completion of 16 weeks, I was with an MOS for a light infantry men with orders cut for Korea. We arrived in Japan and all the guys were getting orders for the outfits and that, but a handful of us and we were told to fall out the next morning at 0600 hours. So nobody knew what was going on, so we did. So one of the lucky things in my Army career was I was appointed to go to a unit supply specialist at the old Japanese Naval Academy in Edojima, Japan. So I said, this is great. So on completion of a five weeks course, I graduated and my orders were for Easy Company, the 180th Regiment, 45th Division. And I said, don't sound right, but not bad. So I get to the Repel Company and the sergeant took my orders and he looked up and smiled at me and I said, what's the matter, Sarge? He says, <laughs> Your MOS says you are a supply specialist, but we don't need supply men, we need riflemen. Well, okay, and he says, a good husky chap like you, we got the perfect one for you. And I knew right away what he was re referring to. Well, he said, I got a good thing and a bad thing, he says, about Easy Company. You're not directly on the MLR. You're in the rear area to a point. Now the bad part. Your company patrols, pulls all the patrols for the line companies that can't afford to take the men off the line. And that was quite a feat. Well, this went on for quite a few months. Finally, I made corporal got rid of my Browning automatic and got a carbine which was quite a few pounds lighter and that went on until we finally got the 179th to come in to uh, give us a few days rest back in Seoul. So they got pounded pretty good and they recalled the 180th back on the front line. And those smart Koreans welcome our division, our regiment, back on the front line. So this went on for quite a while. And the sergeant uh, that was in charge of our outfit, I got word that there was an opening and then my name was on it to go to division headquarters to the honor guard. So he calls me in and told me and I said, gee sergeant, it's a lot of spit and polish and he says, if you don't want it, it's up to you. But he says, in my opinion, I think I'd take it. So I did. I went back and finally I started using some of my unit supply. They put me in charge of a reclamation where they repair cots with a bunch of Koreans. Then other hours then I drilled to become a part of the team. Well, that lasted for just a little while and then I heard that there was orders cut for our company and our whole regiment, I guess it was. And I finally, I seen this reg the regiment go by and I says, that is my outfit. And God bless 
that sergeant and our Lord Almighty. If I hadn't taken that position, I probably wouldn't be here today. It was the last battle of Christmas Hill, one of the last battles of Korea, and casualties were many. And I don't want to go into it. So I stayed there until our division uh, was ready to come home, which I did two, uh, well, pretty two years later. And finally was discharged from the service after a six year period of the inactive reserve. But that is my career. What would you say your most memorable or longest day was while you were over there in Korea? Almost any one of the night patrols. Night was a long, long time waiting for daybreak. When you went on patrol, where would you go behind enemy lines or? Oh, all, all the time in front of our troops, in front of the MLR. And a couple comical parts in that. One night we were out and, of course, we always had a Korean as our point man. He, he patrolled with his nose to smell. But everybody seen this racket, heard this racket and that, <laughs> and ended up to be a wild boar. So it was one of those stories that I don't mind telling about. When you were there, was the weather extremely cold, part of the season? And winter was very cold, and summer was very hot. But I guess maybe it was almost like our home. There were cold winters and hot summers and terrible living. Hard conditions? Oh, yes, yeah. Food was... All right, we, when we were on the line, we were lucky. Things had settled to trench fighting. There were an attack here and there, but once a, a week or so, they used to let us get back to take a shower. Like they say, the day the guys are so bad, they go two days without it, and they feel so bad. But the United States Army did everything on foot, so by the time we got back to our line after our shower, it <laughs> wasn't much of a shower, but at least it got the grime off. But no, I, I've, a lot of things I don't want to remember, but there's a lot of points that was, well, probably good for me. Makes a man out of you. So there are some things that you don't want to remember because they were quite traumatic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, especially my company at the end, they said it was, was bad. I went back, but I didn't know too many of the replacements that were there. So I was one of the lucky ones. Is there anything else that you could, that you'd like to add? No, no, it's surprising how fast the tour went, and when they said the division was going home, I had the, the points to go home with the division. In fact, when I got back, I still had two months to go, and the Army decided uh, might just as well retire them and, uh, instead of replacing them somewhere for just that little bit, but it was just about two months early. But they said, then you got to go on either active or inactive reserve. Well, at that point, I says, I think I tried the, the inactive reserve. Mm -hmm. And so in 19, uh, 1960, then, I finally got my final discharge papers. But that's about, about all I got for my, my Army career. It's a very distinguished one. I noticed that you've got the... Uh 
Combat Infantryman's Badge and uh, the United Nations Service Medal, uh, Korean Service Medal with two bronze service stars. So you had a quite an eventful career during your two years. Oh yes, yes. It, it was full of a lot of good memories and full of a lot of things that I just soon not remember. Cut.